What are the LinkedIn secrets that healthcare professionals need to know? Well, our next guest is a LinkedIn expert that has helped hundreds of healthcare professionals improve their profiles and their presence on that platform. I can't wait for you to learn the LinkedIn secrets from Rachel Simon. Let's get to it. Rachel, welcome to the program. Great. Thanks for having me. Really happy to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to, to get into some LinkedIn tips and tricks with you. But before we get there, can you give our audience a little bit of your background? Absolutely. Um, well, I'm Rachel Simon. I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and I'm a LinkedIn trainer and consultant. So I like to say that I help B2B organizations, uh, you know, meet their goals by leveraging the power of LinkedIn. Uh, and, you know, I come actually from a nonprofit background. Uh, that's where I started my career. And some people are like, oh, you mean you're not a trained marketer? Uh, but, you know, in the nonprofit space, we have to learn how to do everything ourselves. And I worked in program planning and event planning, and I was the one that had to figure out how to get people to come to my stuff. And that's all marketing. Um, but what I've discovered over the years is a lot of the strategies, a lot of the inherent, you know, kind of culture within nonprofit space actually translates really well to LinkedIn because it's about building community, being authentic, and just putting relationship center. Now you have some uh, healthcare cred uh, because you were at the last <laughs> Shishmed conference and you were there helping people. Uh, you were reviewing people's uh, LinkedIn profiles and giving advice. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the work maybe you've done in the healthcare space. Yeah, um, well, I actually have a lot of my clients are in the healthcare space. So uh, I'm, I'm, you know, lucky with the fact that my husband is a healthcare consultant. And so when I started my business, he was kind enough to make introductions to people that he knew. So I've gotten the opportunity over the years to work with everybody from, you know, a senior uh, C deputy CIO at a large health system, all the way down to healthcare consultants, sort of like a lot of people in the vendor space, um, healthcare technology, there's just so there's so much in the um, in the industry. Uh, but where I actually kind of built this strategy was my first client when I started doing marketing consulting was a telemedicine company uh, mm -hmm. here in Atlanta. And they had hired me to do some like other marketing, email marketing, and their CEO had been in his field for, you know, been doing this for like 25, 30 years. And they were like, let's put a call to action in an email to connect with him on LinkedIn. And so I looked at his profile and he had 12 connections, like one, two connections. So I kindly suggested let's get his we got to build his network a little bit so people will see that he actually uses it and we kind of started a whole strategy getting him active posting content utilizing the messages and in a year they act, they had acquired several new clients just through LinkedIn connections um so I like to credit the healthcare industry for actually helping me start my business so thank you very much <laughs> and and Rachel, why is LinkedIn such a great place for healthcare professionals and healthcare companies? I mean, first of all, it's a massive number of people if we think about, right? If we're going, I mean, healthcare encompasses just tremendous number of professionals, again, from and in different areas, right? Again, health systems, the people that are like directly serving patients or making sure that the physicians are able to give quality care. Then there's the vendors that are helping to support those. Then there's the marketers that are marketing all of the fine work that there's, there is going on. Plus there's tremendous amount of constant like innovation change and, and whatnot. So this is the place to be talking about all of those things within the field, the hardest group to find on LinkedIn, which I find, I don't believe they're super active are the actual physicians themselves who are doing patient care. We'll find physician leaders there, but not necessarily like the direct uh, physicians who are like in the trenches. Uh, but 
I think that in the healthcare space, it's like there is just so much going on at any given time that we we really can't opt out. We need to be diving into the conversation. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It's hard to find physicians out there uh, and to a certain extent nurses, but uh, you can find basically almost anyone else that you're looking for at a healthcare provider or a payer, uh, certainly at practices and so forth. So it is, it is, I'm biased, of course. I, I love LinkedIn. But, uh, <laughs> it's definitely a place to be. So, so how can uh, healthcare professionals better leverage LinkedIn in your mind? Yeah, I mean, really, there's a couple of like easy ways, just quick wins, right? Number one, you got to start using it. Like it can't just be, I'm, I don't need it. I'm not looking for a job right now. It is, uh, you have to be on the platform um, and kind of build a habit around it. And it is all about habit building. And look, we all have, we have no excuse because we are carrying these things with us all the time. Uh, so I like to suggest, you know, maybe, maybe change your scroll instead of scrolling TikTok or Instagram or doom scrolling on Twitter, spend some time scrolling on LinkedIn. Um, so one is making a commitment to actually like show up. Two is you building a profile that clearly conveys who you are, what you do, why you do it and who you do it for. And this is an area where I see too often just incomplete profiles, profiles with no branding, profiles that are really talking about um, the person, like Yes, it is our profile, but ultimately we should be writing it for the person we wanna be engaging in conversation with. Um, so getting profiles updated, and then there's a whole strategy around, well, then what, right? Like who's in your network? How do you utilize or create or engage with content? But one and two would be show up and get those profiles in good working order. So people understand what you're all about and what the value is that you bring. So, so is it more about demonstrating your personal brand? Is it more about demonstrating thought leadership? Like, what is it that really that you coach people to to use LinkedIn for? Uh, it's going to depend on what their specific goals are, right? So, generally, like on the individual side, and this could be, you know, again, you could be an employee within an organization. You still could have these goals, right? So, obviously, business development is a goal. Everybody wants more business. Um, visibility, brand awareness, thought leadership, all of those things are, so th those are generally like the primary goals also, which is really, really important is talent acquisition. This is where candidates are coming to look and get a sense of what is the culture at this organization? Is this a culture that feels like it would be a good fit for me? What's my manager like? Like what would be my potential manager? And they're checking out people's profiles who they could potentially be working with. So the talent acquisition piece is super important. Uh, so it's really figuring out, well, what are you looking, you know, obviously you can't have 17 different goals. What are your top, you know, priorities? And then how do we build a strategy to make sure that you are using LinkedIn in a way that's going to help support those goals? Um, and it's a slow game. I mean, it is a long, it's a process, right? We don't, it's not an overnight success. You might see people talking about, being an overnight success, there are very few and far between. It's usually a process that is going to take time and consistency, and that consistency is super, super important. And it sounds like from what you said before, Rachel, that you know there's a lot of valuable content on LinkedIn for people to consume and contribute to, right? Like it sounded like you, one of the recommendations you had was, you know, to show up and, and, and I'm assuming one of those show ups is, as you said, you know, scroll through some of the things that people are writing and then obviously comment on it or become part of that conversation that's out there on LinkedIn. It, yes, exactly. So there's, you know, a lot of content, although uh, in comparison to other platforms, there's still a lot of room, meaning like there's less noise to break through. So if, you know, somebody is interested in, well, Maybe I'll start posting content, but you 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 can stand out, particularly in your industry, because there's just not as much happening in comparison to again, like there's just a so much going on on Twitter or Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Um, yeah, so I think that you know, showing up, consuming, finding the content that's going to like it, it, it needs to resonate with you. It needs to be something that you find to be interesting, where you can comment or 
consider talking about in your own words uh, in a way that is going to like get conversation started because the reason why we want to be doing this is to remind people that we we exist, right? We're not looking to go viral. We're looking to be top of mind. And that is really the ultimate, um, like that's what I'm working, helping my clients with and helping organizations. It's like, how do we get their, them top of mind so that when needs do come up, the people looking for to get those problems solved know who to talk to. So one of the questions that, uh, I certainly get asked a lot about LinkedIn is, you know, I think there's a belief that LinkedIn is only professional. It's got to be 100% professional, uh, I th meaning they only can can talk about things related to their work. So how do you del how do you advise people to to balance uh, personality and sort of this work persona that you have on the platform? I mean, is it all just that's work? Such a I mean, good... I mean, that's a... <laughs> no, it's definitely not. No, so uh, you know. It used to be, let's say like back in, you know, 2015, 16, LinkedIn had a rep to be pretty boring. And I think it was pretty boring because it was a lot of, you know, white papers, case studies, whatnot. Hey, read my blog. Um, and then things started changing slowly. And obviously the pandemic really put that into hyperdrive because we were stuck at home and we were sad and lonely and we missed our friends and we built these communities on LinkedIn and Content got a little, went pretty far to the personal side, more more than it had been. And it's kind of come back a little bit. The reason why I am, and this actually, it's so funny you asked that question because this came up in a, a conversation yesterday. Somebody was like, I don't like all this personal content. I don't understand this personal content. It was actually a client of mine um, who's in the M&A space. And I, um, I was like, well, there's, I go, do you go to a networking event and just launch into business talk you go and say like here in Atlanta did you watch the Braves game what is happening with our team you talk about hey how are your kids or you know did you get your son off to college okay what's he studying like you start to build that rapport through small talk just through just normal conversation that you take an interest in somebody and so there's a way to infuse that into LinkedIn. So a good example right now is, um, you know, we're recording this during the Olympics. So first of all, the Olympics, I'm a junkie. I love watching it. But there's so many interesting lessons that we're learning from the Olympics, right? Watching these competent, these athletes compete. So being able to talk about some things that you're observing, watching, again, the Olympics, like I did a post about the pommel horse guy and how sometimes you need to hire a specialist. That that was his role. So it makes the content more interesting when you can infuse a little bit of your passion, what you're interested in, your hobbies and whatnot, because it's a point of conversation and connection that can open the door that maybe your white paper or case study isn't going to. I like how you put that because you know, LinkedIn is not the place to post your family photos or the camping trip you went on uh, or, or stuff like that. That's not really the platform for it. But uh, using those experiences and talking about uh, your personal passion and incorporating it into something that, you know, there's some, I'll call it a, a business lesson to be learned or, or an aha moment that you had while you were doing something that you're passionate about, you can let that you know, personality flag fly, right? It's okay to talk about that you like camping. It's okay that you you can talk about that you like going and riding roller coasters. Like that's that's not a that's not a problem unless it's that was all the post was about. Right? <laughs> like, exactly, um, and there's oh, and there's always a way to infuse that something in there. So, Rachel, is there something that you recommend to people to really make their profile stand out? The real key is you want your your top card, that's the top piece of your profile. So your banner photo, your profile picture, your headline, that should be dialed in because that is where we're making our first impression. Um, so, you know, a hot tip there is just please try not to default to your title and company for your headline because first of all, it's like a little bit, you yeah, know, we can do better. Um, but some company names, and I've seen like, especially on the vendor side, within the healthcare space, some of these company names, like, I don't know what this company does. If you just see the name, uh, you know, it, 
it, and there's no tagline to explain it. It my my uh, goal is always I don't want like potential customers, prospects, referral partners to have to do a lot of detective work to figure out what the heck you do. Like make it as easy as possible. So get that top card like crystal clear. So Rachel, in terms of the the, the person's profile, in, specifically in the experience section. What do you recommend there? Should I be writing like all of my roles and responsibilities there? You know, do I write a long paragraph? Is bullet points better? What, what's your recommendation for that? Get from your marketing director. What is the boilerplate description that we are using to describe our organization? So put that in there so that everyone's using the same language. Make sure you're connected. You're connecting into the company page. So the logo pops up. Um, you can talk a little bit about your role, like maybe one or two sentences, and then this is a good place for accomplishments. So don't worry about the responsibilities. Like I'm sure you've seen on people's LinkedIn profiles, that's like responsible for, and then like 50 bullet points of all the things, but it's good to have two to three um, accomplishments, particularly if you can have metrics associated with those. Gotcha. Uh, and the the title image, how bright, how bold, uh, how how loud should that uh, title card uh, image be? The your banner photo. The banner, I mean, yes. again, this is where it's great to have a branded banner image from your organization, so that we have this consistent branding there. If that's not something you want to do, then a photo that conveys the industry is very helpful. Um, and you can find lots of like health carry looking pictures going on there. Um, it shouldn't be super, super busy. Uh, it shouldn't have too much text because it can be hard to read. And we have to remember that 50 plus percent of people are looking at LinkedIn on their mobile devices. So then the text is even tinier. Uh, and then the other like best practice with that is keeping the lower left two thirds blank because that's where your profile photo sits. So too often I see people's picture there. It's blocking some important stuff in the banner image. Um, but, you know, particularly for people who work for like a, a large health system, I'd really, really encourage like use that company branding uh, because it exists. It's great. It's been developed like, and it looks nice. Rachel, I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it. Where can people go to connect with you? They can find me on LinkedIn. I'm so easy to find. Um, I love connecting with different people. So if you please just pop in the message where you came across me. Well, Rachel, thank you for being on the program today and sharing all this great information and tips and strategies for, for LinkedIn. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's been my pleasure. I really learned a lot from Rachel. I especially loved her tip about not being afraid to infuse your own personal passions and interests into your professional LinkedIn posts. And hey, if you enjoyed this interview as much as I enjoyed being part of it, please like and subscribe. Also, head on over to Sway Health, that's Sway with two A's, dot health, where you can find more great content like this. I'm Colin Hung, thanks for being here, and I'll catch you on the next episode.